Number three is a vertical circle. We have a mass on a ramp, slides down without friction around the loop that Brad has shown. If we want it to remain in the tra on the track, even at the top of the circle, from what minimum height H must it be released? So our goal is to figure out this height from the lowest level. We aren't given any numbers in this problem, but we do know that the circle has a radius of r, and so the height of the top of the circle is 2r. And so the tricky thing here is we want to figure out how to have it successfully get through the circle. If it got to the circle, if we got here with a velocity of 0, it wouldn't successfully get all the way through, it would just fall straight down. So it has to be able to make it through the top such that it has enough speed to not lose contact with the track. So this becomes a centripetal force question, at least to start. We know that when the object is on the track, the weight is always pulling it towards the ground. Here's a free body diagram for it when it's at the top. We always have mg pointing down. If it's going really fast, there's also a normal force. It would also be a force of the track pushing it downward. But this question is asking what's the minimum height h that will make this work, and so we're figuring out at what height gives us the speed such that the normal force goes to zero at the top of the track. So this goes back to the last unit. We know that at the top of the circle the net force equals ma. We know that the it's a centripetal force, so it's mv squared over r. And we also know that since we're looking for the minimum speed, the only force that's providing that inward acceleration is the weight. So we can set these equal. And we see that the minimum speed to successfully navigate the top of the circle is square root of gr at the top. So now we know what speed we need here to make it through the circle. Don't forget, if you have a question, pause it, write down your question, and then hit play again, and then we'll go over it tomorrow. Okay, so now we're going to call this time 1 the instant it's released, this time 2 the instant that's at the top of the circle, that's the trickiest part of the, tri of the journey. Then we have to figure out what we want to call zero height. There are two good candidates. You could call this final position zero height, or you could call it ground zero height. If you call this position zero height, then the initial height above that zero is h minus 2r. If you call this zero height, then you have h at time 1 and also an h at time 2. And that's fine. I'm going to call this zero height since I do know enough about it. And so I'm going to have gravitational potential at both time 1 and time 2. Okay. So, we're going to set up our big equation. And now we're going to think about what we can get rid of. At time 1, it's not moving, but it is a height above 0. There's no spring. There's no work done by friction. At time 2, it is moving. It is a height above 0, but there's still no spring. And so I'm left with UG1 equals K2 plus UG2. So this becomes, I'm just going to replace these. This is MGH1 equals 1 half MV2 squared plus M g h 2. So the m's all go away. h1 is what we're looking for, so I can just replace it with h. v2 is the velocity at the top, which we discovered is square root of gr, and h2 is twice the radius of the circle, so that's 2r. g h equals 1 half square root of gr squared plus g times 2r. Our goal is to get h in terms of r. So as you can see, we're going to get there. So gh equals 1 half gr plus 2 gr. g's all cancel. 2r plus half r is 2.5r. Ta-da!